Hello, everyone. Again, let's talk about urban planning. So we'll explore now planning technologies and their impact on planning systems. We have our guest with us, Ian Babylon. Um, Ian and I will discuss the promises, uh, the challenges of digital technology and data-driven decision-making in public participation. So our focus here in this talk is on Britain's planning systems. We will examine together the adoption of digital tools, and Ian will present a conceptual model for smart engagement. Ian, welcome to our episode. Hi. Planning technology, plan tech. Tell us about uh, its importance lately in the field of urban planning. Right. So uh, it's quite a complex topic uh, because of the terms that get used, uh, but plan tech is one of the main ones, but it gets uh, confused with other terms in the UK, like prop tech in Scotland, in the policy, they talk about place tech. And so there are differences and overlaps between the terms and it kind of depends on the ways the terms are used. So this is a kind of, it can't sound like a, a little pedantic academic point, but actually there are very practical implications, which is also uh, what the paper is about. Uh, so really in a nutshell, if we, if we look at Plantech, it really looks at uh, how to make development management more efficient and, and effective. So make it quicker and also uh, uh, make sure that the right things are done uh, uh, more effectively. Uh, and so that's really about processing planning applications, doing that uh, well, because uh, in the UK, as in other countries, uh, uh, austerity has meant that, that there are um, uh, more restricted budgets for doing this, and there are fewer people with more work. So less money, fewer people, more work to get through uh, 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 very important volumes of planning applications, especially as the government is pushing for more housing to be built amongst other projects. And then another side of Plantech, uh, what gets subsumed within Plantech is community engagement. And in the two don't they always meet development management and community engagement. It's kind of a more, um, uh, uh, there's a bit of a gap between these two things. Sometimes uh, there is more community engagement in say strategic planning, local development policies, policy making. Uh, even, but then when it comes to development management, commenting on app planning applications, uh, that uh, integration of community engagement is less clear. But in the policy, they kind of uh, group together with the uh, the aspect of making um, planning processes more effective and, and streamlined. Yeah. So um, this is a good kickoff to the conversation. So if we were to look at the research gap, so it would be, as you say, I'm assuming, bridging plan tech with community engagement so this is the research gap of your of your article that's one of them mm -hmm. uh, there are others kind of beyond this paper uh, but addressed by the papers that we've okay. cited which is how do we do planning with less money and fewer mm -hmm. people okay that's a perennial challenge uh, and there's also research gaps in there because actually now there's more collaboration with other people like researchers and things like that, people like that, to make uh, uh, integrate more collaboration with citizens and so on and other partners. You know, people talk about place-based partnerships. So these are things are also a bit beyond the paper, but mm -hmm. uh, our paper feeds into that. Um, and... Uh, uh, what else? Please guide me. That's okay. Should we jump to the findings? Sure. All right. So tell me, um, so your focus, the focus of your, of your article is in, in Britain. So let us know about the findings. Right. So the findings, um, we wanted to make to have a, a finding which was more conceptual and a finding which was more practical. And we wanted to do both of these also by adopting a framework, a conceptual, a theoretical approach that, that fitted both of these things. And so we found that a critical pragmatic approach would be the best way for us to address the, also what we see as is the, the research gap uh, between uh, approaches that tend to be very critical of neoliberal planning, development, and so on. And, and that's, that's a reality. 
And then there's also this other reality of focusing, uh, of having a, uh, excessive enthusiasm about technology, how it's going to save the world and safe planning. Uh, and so we thought something, you know, nuance is always good. And so we thought trading the middle way would be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that we wanted to have a contribution uh, um, in, in that direction. So our findings, basically, we, we kind of ground uh, our pol um, evaluation of uh, British national policy. So we chose representative high-level uh, policy documents for planning in uh, England, Wales, and Scotland. And we identified uh, documents that are roughly equivalent. Uh, every nation has its own dynamics, so it's a bit difficult to choose exactly the right policy documents, but we found uh, the ones that kind of match across these nations. Okay. Uh, and our main findings was that there's really only one policy document in the UK, I mean, in Britain, uh, that really engages with plan tech. It not, doesn't always necessarily use the, the term plan tech, it uses lots of different terms. But that, that document is the Transforming Places Together, which is uh, published by the uh, Scottish government. Uh, it was published in 2020. And it really kind of like uh, sets a blueprint for digital planning as well as digital um, community engagement in planning. Uh, and then there's the uh, Planning for the Future white paper by MH MHCLG, which is the Department for Planning in the UK, in England, England and Wales. Now it's called DLUC, changed name recently. And that's... Uh, that kind of a landmark policy paper was got mixed uh, result, um, anal analysis from academics in the industry, but it, it does have that uh, a very clear focus on both improving the speed at which at which planning applications get processed, uh, but also the the quality of the outcomes. You know what gets built, what gets developed. So it's really focusing on on great, uh, greater speed and quality. And then also integrating uh, community engagement through uh, digital means. So it's got this big kind of data-driven focus uh, on how to make decisions in planning, and that includes community engagement. So the people since the, uh, 2020 have been analyzing this in many different ways, academics and industry, and people have worked with these things also, uh, software companies delivering digital engagement. But it's so it's an on um, it's an ongoing journey and 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 debate. Okay, and uh, I imagine that. So let's try now to bridge your research, your findings with um, real uh, life situations. So I, I imagine first of all that creating, developing plan tech have quite the impact for the work of urban planners and policymakers. So I want you to um, you to tell us more about that. And also, uh, so you mentioned that there are a few uh, governmental documents. Um, that contain plan tech uh, strategies or even the concept of plan tech. So let's look at how your research and real case scenarios can uh, be linked together. Right. So that extends that further elaborates the contribution uh, of the paper. Uh, so basically, a lot of the policy looks at uh, ways to improve en engagement through digital means. And it, uh, if we look at the policy papers, for example, we mainly see that they want to focus on bringing broadband. Mm -hmm. And that's very important, in fact, uh, fast broadband to people. But then statistics show that uh, uh, only, uh, so there's up to 1.5 million households that don't have broadband currently. And also 20% uh, of internet users only access internet through their mobile. And it's a bit difficult with all those digital platforms to do effective engagement on a small, smartphone screen and, and it might not be so the case that everyone has a smartphone either among these these um, people uh, so they really the, the policy implications of that are that we still need in 2023 and then going forward to um, net zero policy and so on in the decades to come we, st we will always need we, as we see it uh, to combine analog in-person methods as well as digital methods. And that's the best way to uh, um, involve people, both different people, but also engage people in different ways because different methods allow to uh, create different outputs. Uh, and, 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 and what we see is true innovation is the capacity to combine these methods, not just side by side, 
uh, in the way that, that, that the digital and analog shape each other over the course of planning projects. So what happens online shapes what happens in person and, and vice versa. And from the, the um, beyond this paper, including this paper, what we've seen the, is the state of the art over the past 10 years, the, lead, the people who do true innovation and engagement, uh, smarter engagement, uh, are the people who who do both in in that kind of way uh, in a recursive uh, uh, way? Mm -hmm. Okay, and back to the research now. Um, where do you think re researchers should turn their, turn their attention to now? So, what's left to find? Right. So, uh, because of the focus and the pace of innovation, uh, technology technologically speaking and, and policy in terms of policy, uh, things move quite fast and there's not necessarily that much space for reflection. So that's especially the case in policy and in industry. Uh, and researchers might also uh, uh, depend on the, um, uh, limited project uh, funding. So uh, this is beyond the paper, but this directly affects opportunities to conduct research on the topic. Uh, and so what we see, uh, what we mentioned in the conclusions is really that need for longitudinal long-term studies that compare how uh, in-person and digital methods get used in specific cities across specific types of projects and comparing these over really the long-term, not just three, year, three years, which is quite common for say research funding, uh, or even um, uh, policy grants for innovation, uh, but rather five years, 10 years, because from previous experience, this is where the change really happens, how trust gets built with citizens. Uh, you can really transform situations. And that's quite uncommon. If you look in the literature, it's just very, it, it's very exceptional that you find such, such studies, but these are the most insightful. So these would really help to tease out our uh, empirical um, uh, findings, but also the conceptual framework uh, uh, that uh, we use, we adopt from uh, Bainon Davies, uh, his unified conception of information um, and technology. Uh, uh, beyond the uh, kind of uh, modern and quick innovation that we find, where we think that uh, conceptual frameworks such as uh, Benon Davies' approach, uh, which builds, uh, draws inspiration from the Incan empire, you know, really conceptualizes in, in kind of universal terms, what's data, what's information, what's knowledge. We see that it helps to kind of really step back and really engage more practically with uh, the kind of bling bling of innovation that we see today. Because if, if you're too close to, to the subject of study or, or, or uh, innovation itself, it's not innovative anymore. It's just little things that happen here and there. But if you want to really engage, we see that you really, you really need to think more more broadly about, about these issues. Of course, some tips for the future. Are there, uh, Ian, any uh, materials and more content for our listeners to further explore Plantech and its impact in urban planning? So uh, obviously, uh, all the things we, all the papers we cited in the article are worth reading, and then there's many more. But from these, I think uh, there are kind of four mm -hmm. that really encourage people to read. So the Benon and Davies framework, it's it's not um, it's not easy to read, but it's very rewarding. Uh, and then uh, the work by Mark Tudor Jones and Alexander Wilson, that's really to the point of plan tech. Uh, and also the capacity of planners to deliver plan tech. Also the work of uh, Rob Kitchen and colleagues at Maynooth University. And then also last but not least, uh, the, the commonplace reports published in December, 2020, Engaging for the Future. That's a really good one because that's a software company providing real data from 10 years of projects and being quite critical about the topic. You don't always hear companies being critical about their subject domain, they're often over enthusiastic, but they really engage with it because they see they, they see the challenges firsthand uh, in their projects. Okay, perfect. And these to our listeners, uh, these four materials that uh, Ian suggested, if you scroll down, you'll find on the recommended materials section, you'll find uh, these materials available. Ian, 
let's go to the grand finale of this conversation. So if there is anything you want our audience to remember about this talk, the punchline, what would it be? So if you want to conduct smarter engagement, make it digital. So I didn't explain that, but digital is, is both uh, physical in person mm -hmm. and digital. And why it's digital? Because it's both at the same time. So yeah. that's, uh, and explore that, not just take my word for it, but how does it work, where you live, where you work? Does it really work? Is it really w worth the investment? Perfect. Straight to the point. Ian, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. For our listeners, if you are watching us on YouTube, you can find all the resources, um, as I mentioned before, all the materials on the Let's Talk About Urban Planning website, included uh, the article um, that Ian Babylon and I have talked about today. You can also listen to this episode wherever you get your podcast. You can just subscribe to our newsletter if you scroll down, um, and you can find uh, us on Twitter at Cogitatio LTA.